everyone, my name is Miranda and today I'm here to review Speak Easy, Speak Love by Mikkel George. And this book, if you haven't heard of it, is a retelling of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, which I actually haven't read. I didn't have to read that one in school, so I don't know if it's more of like a detriment or like what reading Much Do About Nothing would add to this book, obviously because I don't know what to compare it to. I am planning on reading Much Do About Nothing after because I really, really did like this book and I think setting it in the time period of the 1920s really helped too because the 1920s is like one of my favorite time periods ever, just like with the flapper dresses and the speakeasies and all that kind of jazz, literally. I think it's so fascinating. So to take kind of like a Shakespearean play that was obviously set in like Shakespeare's time and move it to 1920s, which is something more modern and recent, I always am a sucker for that, like 10 things I hate about you. I really love how you can take something classic and keep the bones of it, but put a twist on it to make it more modern and more fun. The main setting, the main conflict, I guess, would be that this all takes place revolving around a speakeasy. So it was back in the time during Prohibition when alcohol was legal and speakeasies were super running rampant. So the two main characters, like I said, are Beatrice and Benedict. And Benedict is a person he feels very confined by the restraints his father has put on him so he comes from a wealthy family but he wants to be a writer and kind of have his own freedom and not do necessarily what his dad has planned for him. So at the beginning of the book he ends up running away from his boarding school just before graduation and moves into the speakeasy that he's been going to on the weekends and has become like a family with the people that run it and the people that work there. Beatrice on the other hand is very much confined also by her means because she has been kicked out of school for being unable to afford the funds anymore. Her stepfather stopped paying for her school and used up all the money. So she gets taken in by the speakeasy because her uncle owns it. And that's how those two kind of meet and kind of come into a very antagonistic relationship, I would say. I think I really love their relationship just because it's so like that kind of original like OG enemies to lovers because they really don't get along because they're so similar and I think I really love Beatrice's character for the time period especially she's a very strong independent woman she wants to be a doctor and she's very smart but she doesn't have great social skills which I think is good to see because normally you see like the male character is kind of gruff and off-putting and the girl has to kind of warm her way in and open him up and make him feel all fuzzy inside whereas this was kind of the opposite of like a Beatrice didn't want to have anything like she wanted relationships but like she was willing but she wasn't really willing to like compromise herself for it, you know make herself more feminine make herself more silent which was really great and then also, Benedict wasn't really interested in having Beatrice open up. Like, uh, that's what I really liked is the majority of these characters in the book accepted each other for who they were, even though there are many constraints placed upon them from the time period and also just from not fitting in with, like, the right way to do things and say things. But they're all, like, this merry band of characters that are just so odd, but somehow they all work together and support each other very, very well. I do have to say there was a third point of view in this obviously besides Benedict and um, Beatrice. It was Maggie who I know is I think her, I don't know, I like looked up Much Ado About Nothing so I think her equivalent is Hero's Maid I guess what you could say but she has a very I think timely um, discussion that she has going on in the way she's treated because she's a woman of color back then. I just didn't feel like her story, I feel like her story could have been her own book, you know, I think that's why. So it kind of like, it took me out every time I went into her point of view because it just felt like it was all these other issues aside from Benedict and Beatrice that were really important but just felt like they really deserved like more concentration and it was just kind of like a quick thing and then we would go back to Benedict and Beatrice. And I do have to say I did really love Benedict and Beatrice. It's awesome to see how their relationship um, comes about and how they are both like, they're just my favorite because I love witty characters and they're both two far superior witty characters. Like they just can constantly bicker between one another and it's awesome when you kind of start picking up obviously because you've read books like this before that they're gonna fall in love. So I just think it was a really really cute book and also a very great retelling especially for the time period. I think that adding the speakeasy element of kind of the prohibition and the urgency of like not getting caught but then also what happens if you do and kind of adding in the mob on top of that because the mob was involved in speakeasies and everything it gave it this kind of action that 
was really cool and also allowed Beatrice and Benedict to come together in a way that was kind of like meaning of the minds instead of just like, okay, all of a sudden we like each other. Like it was like they were very similar on intellectual levels. I could even think you could easily argue that Beatrice is higher and just kind of like Benedict kind of like calms her down and like we can't do that because everything will blow up. Great idea, but we want to not blow things. So I just really, really liked it. I think it's a cute story and then of course a cute relationship pairing in it that's absolutely adorable and I'm really excited to read Much Ado About Nothing now because I feel like if you read Much Ado About Nothing and then you go back and read this, I'm sure there's stuff you pick up on that I was just missing like names and places and things and quotes and stuff like that. So I do have to say what I really like is each chapter, um, the like title of each chapter is a quote from Much Ado About Nothing and my favorite one is chapter 34 which the quote from Much Ado About Nothing is and meanwhile I am terrible at reading Shakespeare so I'm gonna paraphrase but for which of my bad parts did thou first fall in love with me and I just think that's so cute because that sums up what this is and it's kind of like a love that's like not like an insta love not like and even not with just Benedict and Beatrice but like Benedict and his friends and Beatrice and her family and her friends and everyone it's kind of showing that love that's unconditional even when we see your bad parts when we see you cry and we see you hurt us by saying things that you didn't mean but in the heat of the moment like we know you're not perfect but we're gonna love you anyway because we love you so I think that was really nice to see it it's not like it's like everything is so dandy and perfect it's like we're gonna have problems but we're gonna stick by you for them so I really really liked it highly recommend if you like Shakespeare retellings or just anything set in the 1920s flapper-esque era because like I said definitely it's not as like I personally like Shakespeare novels but I know like a lot of people can think they're like stuffy or you know like pretentious I think this has a good action element to it with like everything going on with the speakeasy so I highly encourage you to check it out even if you did not like much to do about nothing unless like you didn't like much to do about nothing because you didn't like Beatrice or Benedict because then like probably not gonna like this one but <laughs> anyway if you have read this please feel free to leave your thoughts about down below in the comments I ended up giving it four and a half out of five stars and I am super excited to see what the author puts out next because I think it will be really really great so thank you guys all so much for watching this video please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel down below to really make all sorts of new videos and I'll see you guys next time bye should go have alcohol now right to celebrate this book yeah let's do that